All right, this is fifth grade, module one, lesson 15. And in this lesson, we're going to continue uh, dividing decimals. Uh, plus with this I, well, we're going to be using those place value charts, but we're going to have that I towards the standard algorithm. Uh, we're kind of jumping right into that standard algorithm. I kind of like that. The difference about these problems, however, is students are going to be adding zeros because as we're dividing, we're going to run out of um, digits, so to speak, and we're going to have to add zeros to keep going. So we've got 8.1 divided by 5, or 8 and 1 tenths divided by 5, and we're going to be connecting it with the standard algorithm over here, 8.1 divided by 5. Parents and teachers, remember one of the key things is students oftentimes will say this backwards. They'll say 5 divided by 8.1. Make sure we're clear on that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how it looks in that place value chart technique. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to add an extra row here. There we go, because I need five groups. One, two, three, four, five. Five groups because we're dividing by five. And I'm going to go back and forth between the place value chart and that standard algorithm. So we've got eight ones, and we need to divide it up into five groups. So that means each group is going to get one of those dots. So we're going to put one, and that means we're going to use up five of our dots, and we're going to have three whole numbers left over because when we sort our dots, we get to use five of them, and then we have three left over, and that means these three can be exchanged for tenths. Now, I'm going to go quick on this. I'm going to take each of these dots and give you a quick 10. There's 10, there's 20, and there's 30. So I want you to imagine this is a strip of 10 dots. So now we have 31 tenths. So what does that look over here? That looks like this. We're going to bring down, and we have 31 tenths. Now we're going to take these 31 tenths right here, and we're going to divide them evenly as much as we can into these five groups. What does that mean? Well, that means each group is going to get six dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And lastly, one, two, three, four, five, six. And so we've used up six per group. So each group gets six. So what does that look like over here? And that means I'm going to write a six in the tenths column because we're in the tenths column and each group is six dots. Really that means I need to put a dot decimal point right there. And so how many dots did we use up? Well we used 30 of them because six times five is 30. Six times five gives us 30. How many dots do we have left over? We have one lousy little dot left over. So we could think of it as we used all 10, all 10, all 10, and we have one little tenth left over, which we're going to cash in, and I'm going to use a quick 10 again on this, for 10 hundredths. So there's my strip of 10 dots, right? So what does that look like over here? Well, I didn't have any hundredths at first, but then I'm bringing over 10. And what we can show over here is I did not have any hundredths at first, but now I have 10 of 10 hundredths. That's because we took a tenth and cashed it in for 10 hundredths. So now we have 10 hundredths, and we want to divide them up amongst the five groups. And that means each of the five groups gets two dots and we're going to have nothing left over. So that goes away and we have nothing left over. So what does that look like in our standard algorithm? Looks like this. Each group gets two dots. That means we used up 10 dots because two, groups, uh, two dots times five groups gives us 10. We subtract, we have nothing left over, so we're done. So this means 8.1 divided by 5 is equal to 1.62. So parents and teachers, here's our place value chart, here's our standard algorithm, and hopefully you're seeing how the two 
are related to one another. Ultimately, however, we want our students to be mastering that standard algorithm. We just want them to have it make sense rather than just be a silly rule. To solve using that standard algorithm, first thing, I love the fact that they give the problem like this because that means the students have to rewrite it to look like this. All right, and now that they've written it correctly, let's see. Let's do it. So does we have three ones, three units. Can we take those three units and divide it up amongst six groups? No. So that's, we're going to put a zero there. All right, so now we're going to think of, here's our decimal point, now we're going to think of those ten, I mean those three units, each getting cashed in for ten tenths. So now I want you to think of us as having... 39 tenths. And if you wanted to, parents and teachers, you could kind of cross this off and make it a three. And now they're thinking of 39 tenths. And if they have 39 tenths, and we want to divide those up into six groups, that means each group will get six dots. It means we've used up 36 of them. And so really, it's 39 minus 36, and that gives us three little tenths left over. And we're going to cash those in for hundredths. Well, we don't have any hundredths right now, so I'm going to draw a zero there. And that means we're now going to have 30 hundredths divided amongst those six groups. Gives us five dots in each group, five hundredths in each group. That means we've used up all 30 and we have nothing left over. So our answer is 0 0.65. So here we have a rope. It is 8 and 7 tenths meters long. It's cut into five equal pieces. How long is each piece? Now I want to begin by drawing what that tape diagram would look like or might look like. I'm going to begin with a big old tape and label it as 8.7 meters long. Now, because it says it's been cut into five equal pieces, that means we know it's going to be cut into five equal pieces. There you go. And it's supposed to look pretty equal. Those are not totally equal, but at least you get the idea. And so it says, how long is each piece? And that means one of these pieces has our question mark. And this is the classic tape diagram that suggests you either need to multiply or divide. And in this case, we know we need to divide because we know the total and we know one of the factors, which is 5. We just don't know the other factor right here. So we've got the product. We're missing a factor, so you're going to use division. And what is that going to look like? That's going to look like, let's see, 8.7 divided by 5, right there. Now teachers, ask your students to think critically on how they set this up rather than what most kids do is they just say, well, this number is kind of like the big one and so it goes in the house. You know, we want students to think a little bit more critically than that. And let's role model this, uh, dividing using that standard algorithm. So 8 divided by 5, so you have 8 ones, divided by five into five groups. Each group is going to get one. That means we've used five dots, and we have three ones left over. Those three ones can be cashed in into tenths, and that's going to give us 37 tenths. So I'm going to put my decimal right there. Parents and teachers, it's OK to say the decimal always goes straight up. That's all right, because it's true. Um, Anyway, so 37 tenths divided amongst five groups means each group is going to get seven dots, or seven tenths. That means we've used up 35 tenths, and we have two tenths left over. <clears throat> now we have no hundreds, hundredths at this point, so I'm going to put a zero there. But when we cash in our two-tenths for hundredths, that means we're going to get twenty-hundredths 
and 20 hundredths divided amongst the five groups means each of those five groups is going to get four dots and our remainder is zero. <clears throat> so how long is each piece? Each piece is 1.74 meters. I chose this problem because it has a really interesting tape diagram that's necessary. So Yasmin bought six gallons of apple juice and after filling f four bottles of the same size, and that's key, she had 0 0.3 or three-tenths of a gallon left over. And the big question is how many gallons of apple juice are in each container? So what is our model going to look like? Well, I'm going to begin with this first sentence. Yasmin bought six gallons of apple juice. So I'm going to model what that looks like. And I'm going to draw it kind of large here. And there is our six gallons. Now it says, after filling up four bottles that are the same size, she had three-tenths of a gallon left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that three-tenths of a gallon, and I'm just going to arbitrarily choose this length to represent three-tenths. We're not trying to draw it proportionally here. And then here is my four bottles. All right. Now, the way I drew it, I wish I didn't, um, the way I drew it, these look the same size as this. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can erase, let's see, can I erase? No, it's not going to let me erase. Let's see, can I erase? No. So anyway, uh, our task is to figure out the length of one of these units. So what's our strategy? Well, the first thing we need to do is figure out what's the length of these four units that are the equal size. So to get that answer, we need to do 6 subtract three-tenths. That's 5.7. So that means those four units, whoa, seven, those four units is 5.7. So in order to figure out one unit, we're going to divide 5.7 divided by four. And that will give us the length of one of those units. So on this problem, I thought the interesting thing was drawing the model in the first place and kind of mapping out the strategy. I'm going to leave it up to parents and teachers and students to divide using the standard algorithm. And that wraps up fifth grade module one lesson 15 using the standard algorithm to divide decimals. But this time, we're going to have some remainders that are going to cause us to add some zeros at the end.